Hello everyone, welcome back to KXA and Live. I'm your anchor, Esmeralda Zamora, and today we have our Nick's First Warning Weather segment with our KXA and meteorologist, Nick Bannon. How are you doing today, Nick? Hey, doing pretty well here for Tuesday. How are you, Esme? I'm great and excited to talk about winter. Yes. Let's Let's jump into it. So what is the difference between a meteorological winter and an astronomical winter? Yeah, so we have different definitions here for the seasons. Meteorologists like to... Uh, split up the seasons into full months. So starting December 1st, all the way through the end of February. The reason for this is when we're comparing uh, winters, so this winter to last winter and the one before it, if the dates shifted, it wouldn't be a true comparison. Mm -hmm. But if you can look at the months as a whole, it's much easier to say, hey, these three months of winter are the same as these three months of winter rather than those adjusted dates. And then astronomical winters are based on the sun in relation to the earth. And that changes a little bit year to year or season to season. So it's not exactly the same date and time uh, that those seasons begin and end. Uh, so those are the subtle differences that we're looking at here. So from a meteorologist perspective, winter has already started. It began December 1st. <laughs> but from an astronomical perspective, winter begins this coming Saturday. Now there's a very specific time, and I've got it up on the graphic here, uh, that winter begins here this coming weekend, and that is 321 in the morning. So you'll go to bed Friday night, and it'll still be fall, and then you'll wake up Saturday morning, and uh, as long as you wake up after 321 in the morning, <laughs> you'll be waking up to a new season. So this winter solstice is the marks the first day of winter here this Saturday, December 21st. And that specific time, you may wonder why is it at exactly 321? Well, that marks the point where the center of the sun is directly above the Tropic of Capricorn. And that means that our days are the shortest, that they will be the whole year in the Northern Hemisphere, our day length, and we'll have the longest night of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. And of course, it's the opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. Their days are the longest on the beginning of our astronomical winter because it marks the beginning of their astronomical summer in the southern hemisphere. So they have the longest days uh, of the whole year surrounding our beginning of winter. Now, as far as day length goes, you can see the amount of daylight you'll get if you're in the Arctic Circle. You'll get no daylight here uh, for the winter solstice. The Tropic of Cancer gets three, 10 and a half hours at the equator, 12 hours. Tropic of Capricorn, 13 and a half hours. And then the Antarctic Circle gets 24 hours of daylight. But of course, we don't fall on any of those particular lines here in Central Texas. So our hours of daylight look like this. Our longest day of the year, which was the beginning of summer, 14 hours, 6 minutes of daylight. And then our shortest day, which is the beginning of winter, this Saturday, 10 hours, 11 minutes of daylight. So it's almost a four hour difference between our shortest day of the year and our longest day of the year, which is actually uh, not too terrible of a difference compared to other parts of the country where their longest days are longer, but their shortest days are even shorter uh, than this. So bottom line here, as, may, as we head into this weekend, beginning Sunday, which is you know the day after, Mm -hmm. the first day of winter, our days will start getting slowly longer again. Sunday will only have about a second or so <laughs> more daylight than Saturday. But it does reverse this trend that has begun since the beginning of summer, where our days have been getting shorter and our nights have been getting longer. Uh, so beginning Sunday, days start to slowly get longer again, all the way until the beginning of summer. And then they flip back. And the best part about this time of year is obviously the holidays, but I don't like that we have such short days. I feel like yeah. I can't get enough done. So I'm excited, and I'm sure a lot of people are excited. We're going to be feeling those longer days pretty soon. Yeah, it is going to take a while before you start noticing that the days get longer because <laughs> that change is so subtle at first. Um, but it is worth noting that, yes, we'll be going in the other direction at least beginning uh, this Sunday. Also, some important things to do on the first day of winter. And of course, it falls on the weekend, which is kind of great because you're getting uh, maybe some stuff done around the house anyway. Changing the batteries in your smoke detector 
change the batteries in your carbon monoxide detector. Uh, a lot of those air filters around your home need changing every few months, and it's a good day uh, to do that here the first day of winter, change those HVAC filters. Sometimes you'll have multiple around the house, depending on where the air intake is. Sometimes that one filter is right on your HVAC unit. And then if you have a NOAA weather radio that is battery powered or at least have battery backup, uh, it's a good day to uh, change those batteries as well as any other seasonal things that you like doing here uh, around the beginning of a new season. Let's talk about what we can expect as far as average winter high temperatures go. We're in December now, of course, and our average temperature uh, in the afternoons, our average high is 64 degrees. January drops to 63 and then February it is up to 67. So January, our coldest month of the year. What about rain goes? Well, uh, winter is actually our driest season of the whole year with February being uh, their, our driest month. So December, we average a little under three inches of rain or a little under two and three quarter inches of rain. January is even drier, but February stands out as being uh, easily the driest month of the year. So it's not a, a great season for precipitation. So every little bit that we get uh, certainly counts. And we've got the potential for a little bit of rain to come our way tomorrow morning. It's not going to amount to much. Most of us get less than a tenth of an inch of rain. But hey, we'll take it, right, Esme? Yeah, those little drizzles, drizzles that we see in the morning are just enough, just what we need, right? Yeah, just enough to keep you away <laughs> from the car wash for a little while. But yeah. <laughs> uh, after tomorrow's morning rain showers, we don't expect any rain until potentially Christmas Eve day. Uh, so uh, not bad to go and get that car wash after tomorrow morning. Wow. And if anyone is interested in reading up on some of the topics that we talked about today or that Nick mentioned, um, they are on our website, kxan.com. You can find them on the homepage. And what I like about this blog is that you added those to-do items, things to do during this um, start of winter, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are the things there. And uh, winter, 89 days long in the Northern Hemisphere. And uh, we look at the spring, begins March 20th, of which uh, we'll have roughly equal day and equal night there. Uh, with, as we head into uh, spring. So uh, looking forward to uh, that. Of course, winter is a fun season for us too. We get very comfortable days and nice <laughs> chilly nights. But of course, we'll have to keep an eye on January into February just in case we can get some uh, more active wintry weather. We'll see. We'll see. Well, yeah. thanks so much for joining me, Nick. Thanks so much for having me. And that's all we have today on Nick's First Warning. We'll have more streams happening tomorrow and we hope for everyone to join us there. Thank you.